Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava and this is Speedplay Horse Lords number one. We're gonna start off as the Yugir, a nomadic tribe, or a uh, nomadic horse lord Conite, off in the very edge of the known world. We start off in the uh, traditional Crusader King's way, by attempting to secure alliances with our vassals and getting married. Unfortunately, we mess it up terribly and there is a revolt immediately. Luckily, as a nomadic Conite, we're able to quickly raise a permanent group of horse archers and various other cavalry groups. We immediately win the war by winning a couple battles and go ahead and redivide the territories among our new vassals. Now, as a Conite, we have to keep a delicate balance of control between various other factions within our state. We also will just essentially expand as rapidly as possible. And that means essentially just chasing down other nomadic groups, defeating their army, and sieging their uh, main campsite. And uh, once we've done that, which we've just completed, we go ahead and get a war horse and begin expanding to the south. <clears throat> now, when we expand into other nomadic areas, we just have to chase down their armies. When we're expanding into civilized areas, it's also nice to chase down their armies, and then we just siege out their territories and take direct control, or subjugate them, but I'll usually just take direct control from them. Now, horse lord play is rather straightforward. You just end up snowballing further and further, getting a larger uh, horse archer and various other cavalry group army, and seize more and more territories from the nomads or settled peoples around you. So ultimately this series isn't going to be very much about the plight of our Conite in uh, finding its place in the world, so much as something I think is going to be a bit more interesting. And it kind of has to do with why I play Crusader Kings 2 in general. Uh, in our EU4 games, we essentially just tried to make our countries as powerful as we could, and do so in a way that, you know, wasn't terribly gamey or anything like that. In this, though, I don't play Crusader Kings like most people do. A lot of people play Crusader Kings for the role-playing aspect, and I do enjoy that somewhat. Ultimately, though, my favorite thing about Crusader Kings is that you're really, you really feel like you're building a new world. And I've always really enjoyed the thought of, you know, ruling for a few hundred years and creating a completely different world out of the ruins of the old. As a horse lord, Conite, we are uniquely, uniquely able to build a new world. And that's exactly what I want to do. So, first of all, the first step of building a new world is going to be to conquer the old one. That's uh, just a natural prospect of it. We're also pillaging all of these settled provinces that we've taken control over. That's going to give us enough money to hopefully fund our conquests as well as a few technological points. You see, we're actually advancing in technology right now. We're hopefully going to be able to just rove through all of these territories. You'll notice I'm keeping a decent amount of troops back. Uh, apparently, people in provinces don't like it when you just burn down their homes and cities and villages and whatnot. So we are facing a few rebellions, and it is probably going to be a bit of a problem. Ultimately, though, we're able to take the money that we get from pillaging their lands, and put it into developing our uh, own little group of uh, tents, essentially, in our capital. And we are able to hopefully go ahead and just defeat all of the areas around us while keeping our vassals more or less in check. Now, the only vassals we need to worry about are the other tribes, or the other uh, Coggins. So as long as we're able to keep them on our side, we really don't have anything to worry about. We're lucky we start off in the very edge of the map, where all we have to really worry about are a few incredibly small civilized areas. You see we're actually bracing for a large battle right now, and it just goes horrendously in our favor. Just absolutely devastatingly so. So all we really have to worry about is just roving around in such a way that allows us to be strong enough to take on a major empire once we get to it. Since we're off in the corner, we're not going to get into 
a struggle with a major empire for quite some time, and when we do, we'll almost certainly be ready for it. Uh, I'm not saying that with any real certainty, it just seems like it will be the case. At any rate, though, so the plan for this isn't so much to be a moment-by-moment -moment recapturing of this entire Crusader Kings playthrough. We're probably going to miss a few pieces of the story where it's just rather tedious, and I hope you don't mind if we just either A, speed through it at such an insanely high rate that uh, we just lose a decent amount of the uh, repetition, or maybe even just directly skip through some parts. It's going to be very different from uh, our other series in that way, as it's really going to be just kind of just a gist play, not so much a speed play, although we are going rather quick. Uh, if you have any preferences for whether or not you'd like to see everything that goes on in this campaign, as opposed to maybe skipping a few bits, uh, I'm really open to suggestions as I haven't really fully decided how we're going to do this as of yet. Although you'll see, uh, we have already made very significant gains incredibly easily. As a conite, our entire civilization is essentially developed around just pressing forward. And as you see, we are Manichean, which is a Zoroastrian heresy. I'm going to try to become just regular Zoroastrian, uh, just regular Zoroastrian, and uh, from there get all the options that that ensues, or uh, that encapsulates. At any rate, at any rate, we do go ahead and do that. A few clans start switching to our religion, and we're no longer heretical, which is great news. And we do continue to pillage all the territories that we have taken from the settled societies around us. That's probably going to be a steadfast aspect of this campaign throughout. And at any rate, we're just going to continue roving through and just dominating all the areas around us. Now, we no longer have those groups just sitting on all of our provinces we've just taken over and are pillaging. That's really not because that's not a great idea. Okay, we don't have those armies there, not because it's a great idea not to have the armies there, just because I need the armies at the front. Once we do get enough forces to also pillage while we expand, we'll probably keep some forces behind to pillage and protect our holdings in the rear. Until then though, it really will probably pay off more to just expand more rapidly before any of these areas around us can unify or get alliances or just become a bit of a problem for us. So while we do that, it's important to just occasionally rove back and defeat whatever rebels rise up. You'll notice though that the, rebell that the rebellions are getting smaller as time goes on, simply because they're coming from less developed regions and thus they really don't have the, you know, financial base or population numbers to rise up in any significant groupings. As we get into more settled areas, the rebellions will probably be larger, and hopefully by then we'll have more troops to deal with them. At any rate, in the future we'll probably speed through uh, the bits of just uh, conquest at nauseum and cover more or less the important distinctions between phases of our conquests, as there will be distinct phases in it, and ultimately we will focus on not so much the journey of redrawing the world so much as how we're going to end up redrawing the world once we're done. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. And uh, without any further ado, this is Speedplay Horse Lords in Crusader Kings 2. We're going to build a new world from the ashes of the old. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for part two tomorrow, and we're going to continue this every day of the week. Uh, well, every day of the work week, Monday through Friday.